Okay, I'm going to introduce our next speaker fellow, Jessica Sokolow. Try to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> She's um, created a great presentation for you analyzing the crisis of water in Flint, Michigan using systems thinking. So, without further delay, let's give her some love, Jessica. <laughs>
specifically trained on the rule. And so they couldn't support the local staff in implementing the rules appropriately. Also, the state didn't call upon EPA, their technical experts, to support during the crisis. So what ended up happening was that the drinking water institutional structure did not ensure the water system capacity met the needs of consumers. So researchers stepped in for Virginia Tech and <laughs> local medical institutions to bring light to the crisis and resolve the water system capacity. Now, Flint's water is safe and they're getting their water from Detroit. And so after mapping this, I had a better understanding of the complex problem but I still could not understand how the, the state and local officials let this continue for more than a year. What was this critical point of failure? I realized it's within this one distinction made by state and local regulators between the regulatory requirements and the water quality. And this clued me into their mental models. I realized that from the perspective of state and local regulators, it is their duty to meet the state and federal requirements to causally ensure the water quality is safe, the public need is met. But in this scenario, their perspective is not actually looking at the water quality or if the public need is met. Instead, they're looking at water quality samples, a representation of the water quality. So when you sample, when you're a water system, you go out and you take a select sampling because due to time and other reasons, you can't go and see all of the water at all of the water system, at uh, all of the households. And I remember as a regulator, I would just look at a piece of paper, not the water, to see if we were meeting the requirements. Now, men's, now state and local officials are building their mental model based on this representation. And they're not based, building their mental models on the actual water quality. If they were building on the water quality, they would have resolved this issue much earlier than a year and letting this spiral out of control. And when I built this, I was surprised. As a former regulator who has helped craft the rules, I felt that I was meeting, I was looking at the water quality when I met the requirements. But as Flint shows us, this isn't the case. I propose we need a new mental model that is distinct from the old mental model in three important ways. First, we need to strengthen the causal relationship between state and federal regulators, the state and federal requirements, and the public need, the water quality. Currently, EPA is updating the lead proper rule and making sure this causality is strengthened. Second, we need to expand the perspective of regulators to include the actual water quality, the actual public need. And if this isn't met, third, we need to have a feedback mechanism in place to allow them to take into account what is happening. They need to hear from medical professionals. They need to hear from consumers. And this new mental model is relevant to all regulators, not just drinking water regulators. We want our regulators to be complex adaptive thinkers. It's a changing world and it's a more difficult place to regulate. So what if the problem in Flint wasn't due to a failure to install a corrosion control system or a technical problem, which a lot of people believe, but it was actually due to a failure in our mental model. We need to incentivize and support a new mental model that has stronger distinctions and perspectives so that we know when we turn on our faucet, when we press that drinking water fountain, we are getting safe, clean water that protects and nourishes us and doesn't make 